This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Let's keep it moving here. Let's mention that uh, in late April, uh, we see her hoisting Flash Funk in the air, and uh, or I guess that's May, and then dropping him crotch first across the top rope and then uh, knocking him down to the floor. We also saw a moment where she was blinded the month before and she accidentally lifts up Hunter in a choke outside the ring, thinking he was gold dust. There's more and more physicality. Are guys warming up to the idea? Of, of working with her, or is this one of those deals where people feel like they have to because of, well, Sean and Hunter's political clout with Vince? Vince booked them. No matter who he wanted to make happy, Hunter, Sean, whomever. Uh, but they didn't, the talents did not want to cross the boss. It was that, well, let's don't piss off Sean. Let's don't piss off Hunter. Right. Most guys would say, fuck them. <laughs> well, they would. And if they were still in the business today, this, you know, of course, in the uh, same roles, not as Hunter's the, you know, heir apparent to the throne type guy and, and a big, and a big official there, they didn't, ha- they had stroke, but they also had enemies, those two dudes. So a lot of the guys are defiant and didn't want to give Joni a chance. Cause he was Hunter's girl and he, Hunter was not going to become Mr. Congeniality there. I wish somebody else said, well, that was his job. You're right. I'm wrong again. It wasn't his job. You, you always work better to get along with your people, all people on your team. So, um, I think guys are getting used to it because they saw here it was coming and Vince liked her now. And he was getting more closer to letting her work with men on a, in some sort of storyline program type issue. And they knew that they were picked to be booked in that scenario. It's not going to be the opening match. It's going to be kind of high up on the card and their pay will be increased as a result. And at the end of the day, it's not about your character as a wrestling guy or whatever talent. It's about the cash. I said this before Connie. If it's cash and creative, cash and creative, and it's not about the cash. People say it's not about the money. It's all about the money. And for those guys, they'll compromise their philosophies to go back a bigger payday. Let's talk a little bit about, uh, what she wrote in her book. I want to remind everybody at this point, she's not actually wrestling the guys. She's just beating the crap out of them. Usually after they've lost their match to Hunter, eventually we know that's all going to change, but she wrote in her book. When she came to the company, she was met with quote, resistance, anger, suspicion, ridicule, jealousy, sexual harassment, and even fraud. Boy, she's, uh, saying a lot here. You're a big part of talent relations. Is she coming to you with any of these problems in 97? Ironically, no. What's that tell you? Right. Sells books. Maybe, maybe she need to get that off her chest. Maybe that's her perception. It's her book, so I don't know how to answer that, Conrad, other than fraud. I never heard that one. Uh, sexual harassment would surprise me. Uh, I don't know what else she said she was, uh, had issues with, but nonetheless, uh, no. I Some things you just assume are going to happen. You know, in, in every company's locker room now, that they've been, that they have been, uh, integrated with males and females. It's a, every day is a HR human resources issue. Every day awareness, pay attention, staff it, train about it, seminars on it. It's ongoing everyday process that has to be addressed continually, frequently in those days the population of the female gender in the locker room was a whole lot less bodies than there are now, you know, so, uh, different, different deal. But I think that she was, uh, you know, some of those things are some of the things happened to her or that were, she was looked upon because she was Hunter's girl and Hunter wasn't the most popular guy. I said that I'm not trying to bury him. 
just the way it was. And guys were largely jealous of him. He looked great. He was young. Uh, Vince, he had Vince's ear. Vince had confidence in Hunter's uh, creative input, but most more often than not. And Hunter was best buddies with the best worker on our roster at that time and Shawn Michaels. So there's a lot of issues that float there. And guys are uncomfortable with their role. They were insecure in general. And so there we there, there's where we were on that deal. But she had some she had some entry entering entry level issues. But I don't know how much different that has been with any other female in that similar role or, or uh, even another talent coming in and getting a top spot. They all face basically the same issues. Hers might have been more extreme. The sexual harassment thing obviously was unique to her her uh, being a female, but I never she never came to me that I can recall today saying, all right, so-and-so sexually harassed me. It is, it, it, I don't never happened in that respect. So it could have happened, but she didn't report it when, it, when we could have done something about it. And, uh, hey, by the way, did you see his son Austin's rap? It's on social media about, oh, heck, I don't know, a week ago? No, I missed it. You got to check it out. Okay. Austin Gunn, his Twitter account has a, little video of him, a song he wrote and he sung is, and I, and I'm probably making myself look really stupid and old. Oh no. It's over at, uh, at the Austin gun. It's called son of a gun freestyle. Yeah. You can find it on Twitter at the Austin gun. And don't forget there's two ends in gun, just like Billy gun. Yeah. You'll be, you'll be amazed. I, I watched it cause I told the kid I would, and I didn't want to bring my word to the little bastard. <laughs> I didn't, you know, he's a, he's, a, he's a, he's a dandy. Uh, so I watched it and I was amazed. This little son of a bitch has got talent. And so I, I, uh, and of course his peers would be the hardest on it. They even put him over. So when his own guys put him over, you know, it's pretty damn good. I'm not an aficionado of that music, but I was really, really amazed at how good it was. His facial expressions, his delivery, everything. He hit it, man. He hit it. He hit it right on the knee. He reminded me later on of a Tiger Tiger Woods kid, Charlie, swinging that damn golf club. You talk. You think you think Charlie's will get laid in his lifetime as he gets older? The son of Tiger Woods. Have you seen that footage, Conrad? Uh, no. God damn, man. You got to stop. I haven't been keeping up on my my Tiger Woods. Uh, well, it's all over Twitter. This little kid, they played in a father-son tournament, and the kid's amazing. He had an eagle. Huh? Eventually, as we said, they do reunite. Uh, but the real big story is China qualifies for the King of the Ring tournament in June of 99, which I can't believe is real. Eventually, Road Dog pins China at 13 minutes and 20 seconds with the pump handle slam. And uh, afterwards, he reveals that he was wearing a protective cup. And of course he, he did this because he knew China was going to try for a low blow. So he was ready for it. Uh, Billy Gunn winds up winning the tournament and the crown. So everyone from DX here is doing really, really well. Given what we know is going to come with China becoming the intercontinental champion. As far as you know, was it ever even discussed? And instead of trying Billy Gunn, which we know wound up being a failed experiment as a singles competitor, was it ever considered to try it with China? As far as you know. Probably was discussed. Probably was discussed because she was in that sphere of bouncing ideas around. You know, here, oh, we could do China, or we put China with this person, or we could do this, or whatever. It wasn't just she could be the special referee, she could be in somebody's corner. Now she'd expanded her uh, toolbox, as we, we like to say. <clears throat> so I'm sure it was discussed. Uh, but also, uh, Vince had high hopes for Billy Gunn. Vince thought that Billy Gunn had much more potential as a singles guy because he had done that smoking guns thing for so long. It was time for a new coat of paint on that hot rod. And I think that, uh, so I'm sure it was discussed, but Billy was a pretty much a forerunner in that, dis in those discussions. And you come to find out Billy, quite frankly, is a better tag team guy than he is a singles guy. That's no, you know, that's no, uh, sin. Same could be said of Bobby Eaton, for example, a lot of guys. So, uh, I'm, I'm with you on, uh, it didn't work out as well for Billy. And let's, uh, let's also talk about something else here that almost happened 
the October 6th episode of Raw's War in Kansas City. We see Triple H wrestling the world champion Bret Hart. There's a moment here uh, where China's going to start interfering, and it looks like he's about to punch her. Of course, that doesn't actually happen. Was there something that was there a conversation that had to happen about, hey, we're going to try this, but you guys can't attack her? We're, we're, our sponsors won't let us show that. USA isn't ready for that. I realize these days things are a little different, but back in 97, that feels like something you would have been very aware of. Absolutely. Very aware of it because somebody, some people that didn't know how to pull back the curtain of the, of the, of Oz and see who's sitting there, you know, controlling the, controlling the action, uh, wouldn't understand that a child sitting at home, seeing a man beat up a woman, ain't good TV, figure it out. Well, I like my wrestling rough. God damn it. We got heels and Conrad's a fucking heel bastard. Okay. Uh, all right. So, but there, there's a difference in being disgusting and being a villain and all those things are what makes a heel, a heel in today's world and a baby face, a baby face in today's world. All those roles are changing. It's like, they're like clay. You can keep molding them in a different way. At the end of the day, one stands for right and one stands for wrong. But there's a lot of ways to present that. But absolutely, it was talked about, especially, I, th I think, Conrad, if I'm not mistaken, trying to think back on it, it was a matter of hitting her in the face. Are you with me? Hitting her in the face. Who the fuck are you texting? You texting me again? You ordering lunch? What the hell are you doing? <laughs> see, I can see when your, your phone lights up because it you'll brighten your face. Jim, it's 11.33 on a Tuesday. I own a giant mortgage company. I'm trying to work around your schedule, talk about China, but people still need home loans. So I'm multitasking, baby. You're the man. That's why you're a goddamn entrepreneurial genius. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30 year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money, it's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.